<laughs> I know we're working today. Mark Brandy, yay. <laughs> Look who we've got today. Hi, everyone. Mark and I have just recorded a podcast, which will be out soon. We had such a great conversation, didn't we? It was an excellent conversation. It's always good to chat with you, Cheryl. I, I loved it. So, um, and I think we went over. That's why we're slightly <laughs> late. Uh, welcome, everyone. Now, Mark, this is book number four, mm. Southern Aurora. Do you want to tell us what it's about? Yeah, it's about a kid named Jimmy who's growing up on the poorest street in a small town in the 1980s. But life's about to change for Jimmy when we meet him. Uh, his older brother's just about to get out of jail and there's also a billy cart race in his school that he's really desperate to win. Meanwhile, his mum has a new boyfriend and this guy is a bit erratic, has a bit of a short fuse. So Jimmy's really careful to try to do everything right when he's at home. So the story is essentially about Jimmy's attempts to overcome his circumstances dances and some of the life lessons he learns along the way do you know mark i don't even think we talked about this in the podcast mm. but this just came to me now there's a lot of all of us in jimmy in being children and in wanting to you know not impress but wanting to achieve or wanting to be accepted or wanting to be liked and what came to me just now while you were talking my mother um there were six of us and we did didn't have very much money. So she used to knit our cardigans, our maroon cardigans. Oh. Yeah, really <laughs> lovely. But I didn't want that. I wanted the machine knitted cardigan. Yeah. Because everybody else had the machine knitted cardigan, right? Yeah. I wanted the ones from the store. I was always so embarrassed to pull it out and she put plaits in it and this and that. It's <laughs> just like... And now what I would do for what for a cardigan that was handmade by her. I, it's funny you, you tell that story because I had almost the identical experience. My my mum knitted me this. I remember it clearly. It was this one too. I hated wearing it. Mm. Like anyway, And she would make me wear it like if we're going to a special occasion or anything like that. And I'd be mortified. And I look back on it now and go, God, she did that with such love, love. and, you know, it was yes. a really precious thing. It was better than yes. the kind of crappy windshader that I wanted to wear. But, we, yeah, we, we kind of have a, a, a bit of a um, misguided view sometimes. When we're, when well, we're it's children. all about wanting to be accepted. I just mm. wanted to be just like everybody else, you know. Yeah. I also wanted blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> that never happened. She never <laughs> let me dye my hair. <laughs> This is Mark Brandy. It's Mark Brandy, Cheryl Arkell. What are you reading? Okay, we've got quite a few people here. Uh, Carolyn, hi, Carolyn. She says hi to us. Southern Aurora is definitely on my two TBR list. Mm, Do you know what that is? Yeah, to be read. That's yes. right. This week I read The Tilt by Chris Hammer and Killer Trader by uh, Killer Trader Spy by Tim Ailey. Mark. You've got all yeah. the Australian crime That's writers good. right there. You know, Chris is like prolific. This Isn't guy, it? Just, just, you're putting them out every year at really high quality and it's extraordinary. And, and every, he's a lovely bloke. So. He is. And every time somebody reads a Chris Hammer book, they say it was better than the last one. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, it's I don't fantastic. know how he does it. Yeah. And Tim's great. He Tim was in guy. your seat a couple of weeks ago ah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Christine says hi to us. Sharon says hi. Uh, Georgia says she's reading Grace. Grace Tang's book, a biography, oh. hard read, but yeah, absolutely um, worth reading. Anna says hi to us. Uh, Helen is reading The Seven Sisters. Heidi is, has read Southern Aurora, Aurora and she says it's great. I'm currently reading The Drowning Girls. Meredith says hi to us. Uh, Karen says hi, great to see you both. I'm waiting for Southern Aurora from the library. Currently reading The Tea Ladies by Amanda Hammerson, really loving it. Um, Judy says, I love Southern Aurora. Currently reading Salt and Skin by Eliza Henry Jones, who also is a great young Australian writer. Do you know her? No. She's, I think, the first book, she loves horses. And I think the first book was a fiction oh, book. I, I do know. Like, yeah, yes. I've done, done an event with her actually years ago. Yeah. So that's my, my, my poor memory. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah she, that's she, her. she lives on a flower farm. I think, I think in, so. In, in Victoria. Yeah. yeah. Teresa says, Hi, I'm currently reading The Chocolate Tin by Fiona McIntosh. Love her. Easy reading. Tracy is reading the widow of walter sharon is reading the tea ladies by amanda hampson really enjoying it uh julie is reading molly green's winter at bletchley park and i'm a knitter i love the <laughs> <niche ad. laughs> 
<laughs> Good on you. Jill, um, Jill uh, loved Southern Aurora, which oh. she got as a preview book. Oh, great. Do you know about our preview program? I, I do. You do? Yeah. So for all of you that don't know, we have a program where you can actually receive free books. They're usually proofs. Actually, you might want to show us a proof. You've got a proof there. Uh, okay. um, and what we do is we ask you to review them, send in your review, and uh, that's what we do. So oh, it's these. Yeah. Oh, you're right. It, there you go. Stack. We didn't give you the right, right path. <laughs> show us a proof there. A proof. Like, yeah. Oh, right. there we go. Stephanie Bishop. Stephanie Bishop, sorry. Um, and usually what they've got on the back as well is they've got some details, like, so, um, promotional details and marketing details, so you know that it's approved. But it's usually not the final copy. Is that right? It still needs yeah, to edit. Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, sometimes you've got, like, really minor edits that occur before the, the final book comes out. I think there was a few commas that got moved in, right. in mind, but, right. but it's pretty much bedded down. Right, yeah. okay. It's a good thing to have. It is. Um, I want it. Well, a, pre a preview is really well loved by our readers at home. So I've got a question for everybody listening carefully. A question about preview because Margaret Hickey, do you know of her, crime writer, know, straight yet? Yeah. She was saying that so many of her readers have told her that they that they discovered her through preview, oh. which is great, right? Yeah, yeah. So I want to know how many new authors you have discovered through preview. If any of you have done that and would like to let me know, that would be great. Okay, are you going to tell us about your first book? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll start with Stephanie Bishop, uh, The Anniversary. I'll hold it for you. Okay. and I'm a good holder. That, that's good holding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's the advanced reading copy, so it's not Love the, her. The, the finished cover. But this book came out, I think, earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And I loved this book so much. It was It's probably my favourite read of the year. Yeah, it, it's oh, wow. just such a yeah. mesmerising story. She is an extraordinary writer at a sentence level. I, I found myself rereading passages. It's, oh, a, wow. it's the sort of book you want to, like, get a pencil out mm. and underline mm. um, uh, different passages in it. And it's it's the story of a, a novelist, a lady named J.B. Blackwood. And at the beginning of the story, we learn that she's won this major literary award, international literary award, and she and her husband set off on a cruise, a luxury cruise, to go receive this award and also kind of rekindle their relationship, which is a little bit on the rocks. But on the course of the cruise, uh, the husband falls overboard into the sea and the circumstances leading to that are a little bit unclear and I, I won't give any spoilers away. But it, it's just such a, a beautifully written story. I, I I can't like recommend it any more highly. It's she's also a gentle writer, isn't she? Mm, she's Is a, that how you describe it? That's it's exactly gentle. right. She she yeah. observes those kind of mm. intricacies of adult relationships like very few mm. authors can, and it's. It's also a, a great study of the creative process too and some of the, the kind of contradictions and the difficulties, I guess, authors face in the creative process. Mm. Uh, I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Oh. I think it only just got released in the US yesterday or okay. the day before. Well, let us know if you've read it and what you think. Mm. Okay. All right. Now, um, do you want to pass me my stack somehow? I've missed out on the stack. Okay. That, yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Okay. Your stack's far bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is a wonderful memoir, Irina's Gift. Um, it's about a woman discovering the, uh, the truth about what happened to her family um, in Poland during World War II. It's epic and deeply moving. It is a memoir. And, you know, there are a lot of memoirs around the war um, and um, I often think, can there be another one? But <laughs> there can because thousands of people, millions and thousands of people got affected and every person has their own experience right mm, yeah and when you think about it like that I just think everybody's perspective is a story I guess mm. and this is Irina's gift mm. so that's out now and I think it's a really cute cover okay all right let me just come back here um Julie is reading are you impressed with the way I oh, get through this great. yeah yeah okay <laughs> I am very too. Tech savvy. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> I've just been doing it for a few years um Jill loves Southern Aurora because that was part of our preview program uh, Julie, 
that was Jill. Julie says hi to both of us and she's reading The Paris Architect by Charles Bell Four, 50 pages in and it seems good. Kaz just started The Heart is a Star by Megan Rogers. Meredith. Um, your publicist over there is nodding for every book she hears and is familiar with. I love that. Yeah, yeah, she's agreeing and giving you guys a stamp. Uh, Meredith has just started Drowning by TJ Newman. Um, Natalie, he says hi to us and hi, everyone, and he's currently reading The Tall Man by Chloe Hooper. Oh, do you know, she's another gentle writer. Mm. I love it. I love Bedtime Story as well. Yeah, that mm. is, that's a beautiful book. It's Absolutely a really beautiful, beautiful book. She's got such a beautiful, lovely, gentle way of yeah. storytelling. I like her a lot. And even when she's so critical, like with The Tall Man and some of the nonfiction, you just, I don't know, she, it, the way she talks to you about it is, is so personal. Mm. Um, Christine is currently reading Before You Knew My Name, again, a beautiful book. Um, Jessie uh, says hi to us, reading No Country for Girls by um, Emma Starr. I've got that. I haven't read it yet. It's yeah. on, on my shelf and I keep nearly picking it up, but it, Sort of other things have gotten in the way, but I'll I'll take that recommendation. Yeah, do Jody just finished reading The Flowers of Alice Hart? Wow, um, I think is there a film coming? The Flowers of Alice Hart. Prime TV series. Prime oh. TV series. Thank you to Joan. She knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> Emma says hi, Mark and Cheryl, and hi to the hi, team. Emma. Hi, Emma. Uh, Keisha says lovely to see you both. Just finished Lady Tan's Circle of Women by Lisa C. Brilliant. Sue has just finished The Paris Daughter, a fabulous novel set in World War II. It's a great story and very hard to put down, and I am now reading The Wakes by Diane Yarwood. Now, we talk about this a lot. Do you ever read two books at a time? No. Neither do I. <laughs> they do. That's, yeah. that's impressive. Yeah, that's it's impressive. really impressive. Yeah, no, I, no, I can't no. do it. Maybe I can read a fiction and a really kind of non-fiction where I'm only dipping and dipping out, maybe. Yeah. But usually, I even can't do, you know, a two fictions at one, a two non-fiction at one time. No, no. And also, I think I'm a linear person because even when I, because I'm a big audio person, you audio? Do you do audio? I haven't done audio before. I I started reading, uh, listening to my my own audio book a couple of times just to get a sense of what the the sound was like and and their characterization and I, I couldn't bear it really because <laughs> my, my own voice is in my head with my writing so listening to someone else do it was really tough oh um, isn't that interesting yeah, but... I um I did a radio interview this morning ABC Tamworth and we were talking about memoir and I said I love audio memoir where the author is telling their story, where yeah. they're reading it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, your publicist is nodding her head again. She should be coming in and joining <laughs> right. us, right? Yeah. And um, do you know what I really love? They become my new best friend yeah. because I I develop a relationship with them. So Michelle Obama and I are like that. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. Um, Gabriel Byrne and I are like that. Okay. Yeah, we, we just become. I'm, I'm sure they had you in mind when they were <laughs> doing the reading. Right. Hey, tell me what you guys think at home. I feel as though when they're telling us their story that I'm now your, they are talking to me and no one else, mm. right? Oh, but I think that's true of reading too. I feel like it, it is. an author is telling me their story or writing the story directly for me. They're not. I'm not thinking about anyone else at the time. No, that's right. That's right. Tell us what you think anyway. Um, what have we got? Um Reading this at the moment, that must have been, I think, she must have been reading Irina's Gift or maybe the Stephanie Bishop. Uh, Kaz just started The Heart is a Star by Megan Rogers. Um, Julie, I discovered Natasha Lester and Karen Brooks through Better Reading Preview. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, yeah. Sally is reading 12 Steps to a Long and Fulfilling Death. Oh, lovely, by Sarah Smith. Okay. Uh, Susan says hi and he's reading the sequel to Where Are the Children? Yes, I've discovered new authors from the from the Thursdays. Better reading. What are you reading? Oh, and this session as well. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Kylie uh, says hi and he's currently reading The Paris Notebook by Tessa Harris. Uh, Janine, uh, currently reading Lowry. Thank you. Thanks to the preview. I am enthralled so far, also waiting to get into Death of a Bookseller. Um, Lisa, through preview, I discovered Julie Fison, Denise Picton, Margaret Hickey, Mary Rose Cuskley, mm. and Bonnie Garnis. Oh my God. Thank mm. you, Lisa. You're getting a lot of them because you know what happens? You register, right? Um, and so they're just in the, they're listed as options in the weekly newsletter. And you okay. just register if you want. And we can get, like for yours, we've got yeah. hundreds of registration. And you guys know that. 
And then we have some kind of automatic selector that selects oh, to right. the number of books that we have. Yep. So it's a new group of people every time. That's great. So it's great that you, Lisa, that you got that many. You must be very quick on that. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn says she discovered Margaret Hickey through Wednesday night meet the author segment. Thought she was so nice and read her first two books um, and, and is about to read her new one, Broken Bay. Really enjoy her writing. She's, she's lovely, Margaret, and I've, I've done a couple of events with her too and she's very down to earth and a terrific writer to yeah. I really love the camaraderie between Australian writers. We, we actually hate each other. Yeah, so we, we pretend to be nice. <laughs> I don't to one believe another. that. I don't believe that for a minute. I really see it and I really feel it because usually when I'm talking to somebody, they will, like you, you've done it a couple of times today, they will tell me about another Australian writer or another writer. Whereas when I was in the US, I, did, I worked a little bit in New York, just going around through better reading and, and interviewing writers. And even when I was like two houses down from one author to another, they didn't know about the other author because <laughs> they didn't have festivals. Like live oh, events course. weren't, they weren't meeting each other. And I thought, isn't that interesting? Because here, you know, and I think he, we've also we've got the greater, you know, nationally everybody knows each other. But also like if you go to Perth, for instance, there's a, a huge, you know, Western Australian book community mm. I noticed that with you guys when we had dinner in Melbourne that, you know, you all knew each other. Um, and I love that. I love that. It makes me, I think it's generosity is what I think. And yeah. friendship. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. And, you know, many, many, many authors are, are deep introverts as yes. well. And we're, we're, <laughs> we're sent along to writers of festivals and events. We're, we're, we're kind of forced to interact. And, and yeah, 90% of the time you, you get along really well. The, all the authors I've encountered anyway have been, been completely lovely. Mm. Now, what else have you got? Oh, almost forgot. Yeah. This is a complete change of pace. Um, what an unusual cover. It's a, I love this cover. It's yeah. um, uh, Shannon Burns' Childhood. The, the cover's done by, I think, W.H. Chong, um, wow. the text publishing uh, designer. It's it's a, a fantastic cover. I don't know how clearly it comes through on the screen, but sort of like a, a band, band aid there with the mm -hmm. SB on it. And so this is a, a memoir and it's it's basically a story of Shannon's upbringing in Adelaide, in the suburbs of Adelaide, and he had a very um, disadvantaged and traumatic upbringing. I think it's fair to say, and this is really his reckoning with that. It isn't the easiest read. I'll just say that up front, but. I just, I loved this book so much. I, I, I think, I, I don't like to say a book's an important book, but it, it kind of, mm. I, I really think this is. It, it gives a an unadorned, unvarnished look at really the, the disadvantage so many people face, but in, in this case, Shannon himself. Um, um, so the Band-Aid is like peeling off the, the whole yeah, play on that. Well, yeah, yes. yeah, I, th I think so. I yeah, think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oh wow! I it, want to read this now. Oh, it, it's it's mm. it's great. Mm. It's great. Um, and you know, if if nothing else, it, at one point he ends up working at a. Um, and this isn't a spoiler in any way. He ends up working at a um, recycling facility, a, a waste transfer station, mm. sorting out um, people's rubbish. And if nothing else from this book, you will treat your recycling in a very different mm. way and be much more careful with it because there's someone there at the other end having to deal with it. And he really just tells the story of himself, but also a lot of people who are living at the margins of society. Mm. And one of the wonderful things for Shannon is that he finds refuge in literature. And that's really what gets him through and it's it's really an unsentimental look at his life too. Mm. And one of the things I really loved about it is he he presents kind of the the slippery nature of memory because sometimes things are absolutely not completely. We might have yeah. one recollection of it, but then we have a conflicting mm. recollection, mm. and he presents that and says, "I'm not completely sure. I have another memory of this that's like this." Mm. And so there's a real honesty to the way he tells the story, mm. and he, he brings the reader in close. Um, mm. I loved it. I really loved it. Well, um, can we put that on our TBR list, please, Jane? I'll just put that aside so we can remember to do that. That was a beautiful review. Thank you, Mark. Sure. It was really nice. Um, okay, all right. Now I'm going to go back to the comments without crying. Um, Alita says, uh, here we go. Anna says, 
Anna says, just finished reading Weekends with the Sunshine Gardening Society. Loved it. Finished it in record time. What's record time, Anna? Tell us. <laughs> um, Alita is reading False Witness by Karen Slaughter. She's a person, a writer that keeps coming up. Um, I think she's English, English yeah, crime. English, yeah. yeah. Karen, um, I, I read Annie, read Annie Lyons for the first time through Preview, the Air Raid Book Club, and Brinda Charry, the East Indian. I've just finished Resurrection by Roger Simpson, the second Halifax series, so um, has already read him, and that was a preview. I have been very lucky to receive these previews from Better Reading. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, Jessie, she does, um, and she listens to audiobooks as well. Deborah, hi, everyone. I'm reading The Schoolgirl Strangler by Catherine Kovacki, I think. Kovacic. Um, Kim loved Wimmera. Mm. Wimmera. So there you go. That's great. That is great. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> made me happy. Yes. Emma says, reading Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros at the moment and also Womanhood brought forward because of the podcast. It was so good. Alison, I discovered Lenny's Book of Everything by Karen Foxley, thanks to Preview. I probably wouldn't have picked it up otherwise, but it was one of the most beautiful books I've ever read. Isn't that amazing? Oh. Just that you you do that. You go. I guess the fact that you actually put your name down for it, you were curious, but I love that. I've discovered many more authors over the years, but the discovery stand this discovery stands out for me. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Alison. That's thanks really for good. sharing that. Um, Julie, absolutely love this segment with all the wonderful recommendations from both Better Reading and the readers and members. Absolutely, I agree with you. You know, I, in the evening I go home and reread everybody's um, comments because I like to and because I don't have a life. Um, anyway, <laughs> but does anyone else get stressed about keeping up? Oh, I don't. I hope you don't. I hope there's no pressure to keep up. Um, I don't. And I hope, Julie, you don't. We, we're not here about quantity. We're just here about good stories. Uh, too many books on your pile. Yeah, I guess that might be daunting if you keep adding them. Um, that is growing by the minute. Okay. Kim is currently reading American Dirt. Emma, um, her uh, TBR pile has extend, expanded enormously. Um, uh, Emma says it's such a wonderful book. Um, I don't know what that's in reference to. Let's, I, say, let's say it's my book. Yeah, let's say it's your book. Well, let's hold it up again, Southern Aurora. <laughs> There you go. Um, and uh, Kylie says, can't read two books at once. Thanks, Kylie. Neither can I. Kim, Australian authors are my favourite. Uh, do you know, um, we, they, they don't seem to be there today, but very often we have librarians from the New York Public Library. Oh. They join in this segment. And oh, that's they, so cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Uh, I can't see her there today, but they are usually there. Um, Annette's reading Birthright by Fiona Lowe. Um, Kylie, too many readers here. Pick a book just for the love of the cover. <laughs> That's true. We In all do. <laughs> That's right. Um, uh, so what do we got? Um, Anna, record time is about two weeks during my half-hour bus ride each day uh, to and from work Monday to Friday. That's pretty good, yeah. Janet, I've just finished Ruth Wears, It Girl and Zero Days. I'm getting ready for Karen's daughter's latest on the weekend. Okay, I've got a few to get through. Adele Parks, um, she's wonderful. She's a UK writer. Uh, just Between Us, it's clever, well-told um, thriller and it's about a woman who is uh, kidnapped, um, missing, presumed dead. There you go. We Sounds love great. Adele. Yeah, she's lovely. I recorded a podcast with her too. Oh, Kate Grenville. Mm. She's got a new book. We love her. Uh, Restless Do uh, Dolly uh, Maunder. Yeah, and she, I mean, we all know who Kate Grenville is. And this is a book about women who um, paved the way for us today. She's um, she's very meticulous writer as well, isn't she? And a great storyteller. Yeah. What was her last book? The, um... Something Lee's, was it? Well, yeah. let's find out what Kate Grenville's last book yeah, was. I read the last one. It's great. Mm. Um, Anna Funder, have you read this? No. Oh, my gosh. Well, I love her. I actually seriously have a crush on Anna Funder. <laughs> I think she's a beautiful writer. Um, so the two previous books are Stasi Land and All That I Am. That's I think right. All That I Am won the Miles, Miles Franklin. Franklin. Yeah. Yeah. She was here in here the other day and we recorded a podcast but her inspiration for writing is she's a mother, she's, you know, a, a wife and very happily married, but she was at the Broadway Shopping Centre, which is just like a mall, and she was doing her grocery shopping or some kind of shopping, and she decided, why me? Why am I the person in the relationship that has to do the work? The, and 
for most of us, we'd go back and probably nag our partners or our husbands or our whatever. No, she went back and decided it was time to read George Orwell, right? And in reading George Orwell, she discovered Mrs Orwell. She discovered his wife and the plight of her and how she was as smart as him and could write as well as he could, but she created the environment for him to write. Yeah. So it's non-fiction, it's kind of a little bit fiction, and it's also got some of Anna Funder's life in it. Really beautiful book, very well told. Mm, sounds fascinating. Yeah, really fascinating. Um, that's out, and um, also the podcast is out soon. Now that we're nearly done, there's a couple of things I have to remind people of. Oh, Top 50 Kids, vote now. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. It's on closes Sunday. Okay, top 50 kids. Don't forget, you've got to vote now. Closes Sunday. And do you know uh, we have seven, is it seven? No, yes, yeah, seven book packs to give away. So if you vote, you go into the draw to win the whole 50 books. And that's such a great prize. Okay, all right. I think that's it for now. Um, Mark? Thank you so much for being here. Pleasure, Cheryl. Thank Great. you to everyone at home. We just love them. I don't know if you're on Facebook, but if yes. you are, there'll be many more comments and you can jump on and answer them if you like because a lot of people watch this not live as well. Yeah. Um, but thank you for those that joined us today. And um, thank you to your lovely publicist, publicist <laughs> Maddie, who's really there interacting with us. Yeah. She is a superstar. <laughs>